This conference will now be recorded. Hi guys, good morning. Sorry for the delay. Actually, I was, I thought this is in a different meeting. Then I realized, so I came back. So, I think yesterday, uh, you people were able to successfully create a Jenkins server. Richa, were you able to create a Jenkins server? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, but while creating it, I didn't use the background file. Mm -hmm. I used var file dot var. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's good and working. Okay, great. Uh, Prakash, were you able to create a Jenkins file? Sorry, were you able to create a Jenkins server, Prakash? Uh, like, uh, uh, he's, uh, for, for, for uh, he's, uh, Abdullah, he's this is my first class. I just wanted to see how the uh, training is conducted. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, uh, great guys. Uh, so let's take start. So yesterday we have seen that uh, we we actually created a small Jenkins server, right? So let me get out of this one and log into my account. I have a Jenkins server right already. So you might you might now you understand that how to create a Jenkins server uh, at least how to install it and how to run. So as I already said that Jenkins is very interesting server. Just give me a second. Okay, I can do it. Not a problem. So yesterday I had a small issues with my laptop. So I had to delete uh, the node. Jink is hard. Since Prakash is there, we will be starting Jenkins server again, but very fastly. So Prakash, I hope this will be useful for you. So we actually work with a basic tech called right hand Prakash. So we create a, a vagrant is like a hypervisor where you can actually utilize it. Uh, to create a virtual machines on, on your host laptop. So, and with Vagrant, you can always you know, increase or decrease the amount of memory you allocate for each, for each machine. So here I allocated 512 memory, which I'm changing it to 104. And that should be sufficient now. So a new mission will be created. So by the meantime, we'll let's uh, dig deep into the docs.
So for any any open source project, this is the main main thing that you have to look into is the documentation. Especially if you are you are in the position of a DevOps and you want to install, maintain, or you know uh, support a system. The first and foremost, we have to be very familiar is with the documentation. In the Jenkins documentation, if you see, you have a lot of different uh, uh, modules or uh, directions, but the first and most important would be the how to install Jenkins. That's good. But you also need to learn Jenkins. So what do you mean by learn? So this is called basically system administration. So here it actually says that, hey, uh, this is the main, main system for Jenkins servers and nodes. Here, you're gonna check into a lot of subsections subsections which actually include how to backup and restore jenkins how to monitor jenkins how to secure jenkins how to manage jenkins with the puppet and other automations okay so this is for maintaining complete system and how coming to using jenkins okay you have something called uh, pipelines which actually is the main uh, uh, one of the main uh, feature of jenkins so we're going to discuss this today okay so once the jenkins is up and if you want to have a tutorial we have three tutorials available so this is like basic tutorial what is called pipeline so you have a lot more this documentation really helps you but you need to go with the flow of uh, how to install understand the system how to maintain the system and then how to what are the main features of the system so this is the way you have to move on so coming to the jenkins yeah, this, this one. okay it takes another two more minutes so meanwhile let's actually dig deep into how to install jenkins so installing jenkins is very simple for linux go to linux go to ubuntu run these commands and jenkins will get installed okay so even now we're gonna run them shouldn't be a problem okay now and we have another project called uh, it's another project called blue ocean so for pipelining this uh, this is like uh, let's say ui it provides a very clear ui but it's an extra added thing that you, you want to work with, you can work with, otherwise you can stick with basic Jenkins UI. Okay. Good. So managing Jenkins is one more important system, okay. So this is the main, uh, main, this is one of the main documentation which helps you to identify how to manage. If you have any, you know, uh, errors, then this helps you to, you know, troubleshoot them. Okay, our uh, Vagrant is up now, class. So Vagrant SSH, sorry. Vagrant SSH node 4. So we are now in our system, so let me just update. Okay, so go to, how do you install it? In the handbook, go to handbook, install Jenkins, and then look for Linux. And this is what you need to run. So we are installing Jenkins right now. Okay, after updating our local repo. Right. So uh, before you install, actually, uh, I think I forgot something. You also need to install Open um, OpenJDK.
I have to install OpenJDK first because that is a prerequisite because Jenkins runs in Java. So Jenkins is actually, as we see yesterday, Jenkins required Java. Okay, in the requirement space. Please take a few minutes. Always maintain that. Uh, so thinking would be very critical to your organization, okay? So in such case, it's always your responsibility to maintain Jenkins and it shouldn't go down. But the worst point is Jenkins is very fragile. So never run any jobs inside Jenkins on your master node. Always have slaves. Uh, we're gonna see how you actually add slaves and stuff like that. But always maintain things in a master slave mode that will really help you. Because if you just maintain master, then that will be real problematic. So let me install Jenkins now. You see, it is actually hitting peak package.jenkins.io Debian stable band. So it is actually downloading Jenkins, you see. Okay, so now it is time to actually, uh, you know, run this Jenkins. Jenkins is already running. How do you check? Sudo service Jenkins. It has, says, hey, Jenkins is active and running. So how do you check? Simple. What is your address? Your adapter address is 192.168.10.14 from background. And Jenkins basically runs by default 880 port. So you hit, you'll be able to see the Jenkins installation and you have to put the secret. So just that. Okay. Just sudo cat this particular uh, you know secret password. Then you have the password here. You copy the password, put it, and run. So it take take a bit more time, but this time we're gonna be okay because we have one GB RAM. Okay, yesterday. We have the, the box was uh, crashing a lot because it didn't support uh, with the 512. <laughs> okay. That's why I have to create this new one. But now uh, I think that's it from yesterday's lesson what he actually, you know, looked into installation of Jenkins. But now let's go in a bit deeper using Jenkins. So these are like, how do you use credentials with Jenkins? How do you about a job or a fingerprints? Everything which we're gonna discuss once our, our uh, Jenkins UI is set up. So give it a few more minutes, we'll be ready. Meanwhile, uh, Maya, Amaya and uh, Rohit were you able to complete yesterday the installation of Jenkins on your nodes, on your local nodes.
Hello. Hello. Yeah, man, I can hear you now. Uh, Tell me, I'm running Vagrant on Gbash and I'm not able to install Jenkins in Gbash. Where, where? Oh, uh, not... Gbash. I'm running Vagrant on Gbash, but I don't know how to install Jenkins on Gbash. No, you don't run on directly for system, okay? Okay. You yeah. did you create a virtual machine using Vagrant? Oh uh, yeah. Were you able to SSH into it? Yeah, yeah. And then it should work, right? Uh, I will try it today again. I was not able to install it yesterday. Okay, no problem. But uh, uh, if you can join with Eggly, I can help you troubleshoot it. Okay. Okay, okay, sure. Thank you. Uh, Rohit, any update? So Jenkins is installed now. Okay, so this is my Jenkins URL. I already have it. Jenkins is ready. So I'm starting my Jenkins now. I'm inside my Jenkins. Now, the first and foremost utilization of Jenkins is to creation of items like we discussed yesterday. Okay, so these are basically the Jenkins, what we call them, objects, uh, what you can call it jobs or items so these items are basically the jobs or automation jobs that run okay basic uh, based on jenkins so the first and foremost job is this one okay so freestyle project is an independent job and uh, let's go with a sample hello world Like we discussed yesterday, so we know what is general source code to go. But uh, let me rephrase in general, let me describe this first job. Okay, you have to describe, otherwise, it can be a bit more. You will, it actually helps you to understand who, who did what to this job if there is a bunch of DevOps in your company. Okay, and uh, source code management, are you, do you want to, you know, download Git? Uh, you want to replace Git? then this is the place that you need to put your git config okay but currently i don't want any git uh, i will replace it uh, we have something called bit trigger so trigger remotely scripts workspace now i i have nothing to trigger for this because it's my first job and the build environment i don't want to utilize any of them because i want the environment to be simplest so i'm going with the shell script i'm saying Okay. I just gave the post this. So this is build. That means this is the main operation. And post build is after build. What should it do? I can send an email notification. I can send. I can publish it to Git. I, so this is this is also required because once the job is run, you have results. You also need to publish them somewhere. So this helps you to publish the what are the job results here. But currently, I don't require any publishment. I just want this to be running. So I have saved my job. Okay. So if you look from Jenkins outside, you have already a job. This is the UI that any Jenkins user will see. Okay. So you are the person who creates the job, but uh, the, the the users of the jobs are might be developers or might be testing team or might be deployment team anybody okay now if you come here i'm going to build build now is the initiation uh, trigger for this project to run so i'm actually running this project i'm building the job now so the job is successful if you see from console output you are going to say hey this is started by the user called admin because this is the main and it is running as a system process it should be 
on the building workspaces where like this is the workspace of this job so you might be thinking that okay where does my where does the job actually stays so this is your job okay this is the workspace where it ran okay and then the first job the main job is echo hello world so it is outputted to hello world that's it finish so it is simplest job but you can see visualize from here okay so this job has a workspace and if you want to check in the workspace you can click on workspace as well and there are no files any doubts with respect to this this job guys any doubts till now okay i consider no, no. good uh, now we are gonna go with the uh, small example we're gonna create um, what we're gonna do okay 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 So what I'm going to do now is to create a to-do app. Yeah. And this is a backend app. Okay, it might be a bit, bit bigger for you. So let me see. Okay, we stick with the to do app now. Okay, so it's an open project app, so I can copy anywhere. So I'm going to create another job now. Okay, to do app build job that means. Once the project is actually coded, you have to build it. Uh, the build operation basically plays this in for front end to minimize the JavaScript. And for back end, it depends on the language. Language, if you use Java, you have to build it. If you don't use Java, but maybe use JavaScript, you don't really need to build it. So, to do app. So I'm going to put my git. Okay. And uh, what else? Yeah, master branch. I can put my periodic or uh, when the other job is done. So it's like, okay, I can always check. Uh, so, Okay, so if I click on the my first job, this job will should should start once that is done. Okay, now I want to clear my workspace before it starts. I want it to be about if it actually is stuck for more than let's say twenty five minutes. Twenty yeah, twenty minutes. Uh, not needed for now. Don't need to come for that. 
Okay. So actually this requires node, right? Because I, I need node to run. Okay. So I need to install node here. In this, this is a Jenkins machine. So if I want to compile this, I need a node. Okay. So let me see what package JSON directory. Don't put this menu okay. So I have to install Node.js. Yeah, so you always it's better you always go with the package manager installation because it actually do a lot of the heavy lifting. So this is the installation uh, instruction. So we can go with the node 10, shouldn't be a problem. So I'm just installing them in my master. So if you, you also need to install this uh, in a place where you want your job to run. So currently I'm running in my master, okay? Uh, but there is something called slave where you can actually run particular jobs, okay? So a slave is by a slave is basically, uh, you know what we call them workers. So uh, it is basically a computing resource with all the required uh, conditions met, such as installation of a language language requirements such as a Node or maybe Java or maybe Python. So whatever the, your code base is, you require those technology stack to be already installed in your build server. So currently, in my build server, there is no Node. That's why I'm installing Node.js. Okay, because my code base for this particular sample actually demands Node.js. So let it install for a while. Okay. Now, that's good. Now my first command would be npm install. Second would be npm run build. So this is like I'm creating a build. These are the main two commands. Yeah, so far my memory goes. And then let's so work with one. Have initiated the job. Let's see what's happening. It has contacted the Git. It is downloading the to-do app. So now it is downloading. It's running the NPM. That means, uh, yeah, it is running it. So this is how you, you're gonna verify everything. This is your console for your job. And in the console, 
you always uh, what are the command that runs so npm install gives the output that output can be seen in this console so this is the place where you verify or you monitor your job uh, your job behavior It says that there is a failure. Uh, the failure is because there is a, some module which actually told the setup. So it says that, hey, you have to, there is a lot of binaries. Maybe I have to utilize 14, that might help. So what can I do is that I can give this link to you guys. Okay, you verify these are the two commands that you have to run, but you try with math 10, but try with 14. Okay, that might help you to actually run this job successfully. But in the end, what actually matters is that you run this job or not. Okay, uh, so this is the way that you actually run a job so i think tomorrow uh, i'll prepare this in a such a fashion that it actually runs successfully okay i will explain what are the extra things that i do but normally this should fix but i think i don't really remember uh, it's a 10 or 14. so i'm thinking it's mostly 14. okay so this is the way that you create a job and you create a build okay so what happens is if the build is successful, then you have a new workspace. In the workspace, you have a particular directory, which is called public. Inside public, you have these files, okay? Not exactly this, but you have a different files. Um, this is not successful, right? So that's why the files are not created. But normally, if you copy, the, you copy these files and put it behind your web server as a static files. So that is how um, so even that operation can be configured in your job. So if you go to configuration, you have an option called publish. Okay, you have an option called publish. So not git publish, but you have an option called, uh, what do you call this? Uh, copy, copying this artifact to uh, different servers. So you can actually, uh, the beauty of the Jenkins server is, you, it's a very extensible. It has a very vast amount of plugins. So if you are using any kind of artifactory or Nexus 3, you can publish to Nexus 3. But you might be thinking there is no option to publish. How can I publish there? So I will show you how to do that. So go to Jenkins. Okay, go to manage Jenkins. Go, go to manage plugins. Okay. In the manage plugins, go to available. Now you have something called Nexus. It is bit slow, my my because it is only one GB, right? So now if you see, there's something called Nexus artifact uploader. This is a plugin. So you click here and you click install without restart. So these are all the plugins that requires. So these are the two plugins that are just installed. Okay. Now, once you install plugin, imagine this in real time, you can't restart normally, but you also need to schedule it so that some plugins demand the restart. So you might be thinking, okay, how can I restart brother? How, where is, you know, what is the process for restarting? Okay, so simple. Click, now you have Anna Jenkins. And now here, 
okay this is something called prepare for shutdown that means don't accept any more jobs if you are actually going to restart your machine it's very important guys because a lot of people do mistake uh, of restarting it manually never do that do first preparation for your shutdown may send an email across the team and once the team approves and the particular time zone click on this prepare shutdown when you click on prepare shutdown okay it's going to look disabled to every user who is using the jenkins so you can wait for 15 minutes or you can wait for 10 minutes you can see what are the things that is actually happening now once that is done now you have to restart okay you can use jenkins cli or there is a shortcut call basically i don't know if you can actually have this again available but a lot of companies do still uh, make it available so when you say restart then again it's going to ask you hey should i do the restart you say yes with the right permissions like admin only then you will be able to restart now just wait a few more minutes So now Jenkins server is restarting. Yeah. So do remember the 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 restart will definitely take a time. Okay. If you have a large amount of jobs, then it will have to, you know, uh, wipe a lot of uh, cache and other stuff. So always make sure that you have sufficient time already for it. Okay. Okay. So tomorrow we're gonna look into basics of uh, the. I mean, the, that would be the final class, and we can start with the. Um, the uh, uh, the other tech that is in the pipeline but today let's go deeper into champions so you know how to create an item okay and tomorrow we're going to see two items one is a build job another is pipeline job both two items will require our so that would be done now let's go with the peoples so you can see the amount of users available in this people okay so currently there is only one user, that's why. So you may be thinking, okay, I want to create another user. Okay, how can I create another user? You can't create any people. And you write it in manage users. And here there is an option called create user. Click it. And now you can give a username. This is admin to So I have to give a lot of email. Uh, 
presentation. Okay, now you can see admin and uh, this is another user. So he can log in now if you share the password. Okay. Now, what is a build history? So you can see how many builds are actually running in your Jenkins by actually going to build history. Okay, so how many builds running in this particular two hours, three hours, four hours, or eight hours are in this date of June 30th? You can see it visually, right? This really is helpful for you to understand uh, what is the criticality of the Jenkins Geno server. And, and if you're actually having more than, let's say, four to five build jobs per day per project, and if you have more than five projects, Make sure that your Jenkins is highly available. That means that you have more than a master server, you have more than a slave server, and you can always increase the capacity because from time to time, because of requirement, a lot of jobs will stay in pipe, in pipeline, uh, just because there, is, there are no uh, resources available to run their jobs. So the average time you can actually check inside the job, check into the average time, it will show you the average time of running a job. So this is the how uh, this is the main utilization of a build history. Now you have something interesting called managed Jenkins. This is the main, let's say, uh, this is for only administrators since you are a DevOps. So you, you are, this is your responsibility to get to maintain. So coming to the system configuration, okay. So what is configuration system? Configuring system is basically is is the way that you actually make sure all the plugins that you have they have the correct default access and also default paths. If we check into the configuration system configuration of Jenkins, you see the home directory is this one. Right? This is where a lot of people actually plunk in interviews as well. How do you check the home directory of Jenkins? This is the home directory of Jenkins. You didn't create it, it came by the fun. Okay, so in this home directory, this this is the directory you need to take a complete backup. Okay, of which all the work, all the jobs related info will be there. Okay, so number of jobs will be here, all the job instances that one, two, three will be here. You want to check? You can check. You see, the, these are the basic instances that have been created. But if you go to jobs, okay, the jobs have the domain, the complete configuration of the jobs. Now, system message. You want to write something in the system message, you can write it. So number of executors to what do you mean by number of executors? Uh, how many executors you want? When you have a number of work, a number of uh, worker nodes, make sure that you have a number of executors. So if you have three, then put it three, but default put it two because it helps you to actually have more acceptance of jobs if you have the available resources. Now, the Jenkins location is main URL and the email of system admin. And then server resource files of another domain. Don't worry about that. So these are another normal stream global properties of pipelines. So they're just default in any stuff. Okay. Now the interesting part comes from here. Lockable resource manager. Do you need to lock some resources to a particular uh, job or particular uh, group of jobs? Then you can do that. Add a lock lockable resource, define it. But don't do that because you are actually preventing your Jenkins to be more efficient. Okay, so you might have a different comments from other devops. So, but this is one of the interesting feature of Jenkins lockable resource manager and the GitHub. So if you have a GitHub, we can add your GitHub server here. 
so that by, whenever uh, there is a keyboard change at GitHub level, the Jenkins server will be able to, you know, to get the jobs. Now, same goes with subversion. Okay, you want to get uh, email notification of your jobs, you can set it up the whole email, your SMTP server, your uh, uh, email, basic email suffix, and who are the people who, what is their email address to get, you know, by defaultly send it, the re default re uh, email recipients addresses. Okay, what are the domains that is allowed? Okay, what are the domains uh, by default you have to remove? So, it's in, in simple term, it's complete email configuration section. Okay. Now the notebook, again, this is another basic notification. So this is basically your system configuration. Now, that is good. You, unload, you, al you already checked what is called managed plugin, how to install it. Now, global tool configuration means, I want to configure my plugin, not my system, because the new plugin also has some settings, right? So the Git plugin has these settings, okay? The JDK, currently we don't have any J, I think we have a JDK. Okay, we have a JDK, but that is a default, that's why this is not picking up. Okay, if you are actually using Marvin, you can actually use default settings that's placed in the job, or you can use the system. So this is Marvin level, this is JDK level, this is Git level, this is Gradle, but the Gradle doesn't come uh, by default. You have to install it uh, to run the Gradle related jobs on your build server. This is Ant and Maven, both are the same as well. These are build option for Java projects. So this is your basic global tool configuration. And this is the section where you configure. If you check the gate, then what is the configuration? The name is default and the path to execute the git is git. That's it. Good. Now we are done with basic system configuration and uh, the subsections. Now we have something called security. Okay. So security and manage, manage users, we already checked. So manage credential is something really important. Let's use that. So how do you go with the manage credentials? You have a direct link as well. Okay. Manage credentials. Click. You come to this particular page. Here. What is credential? AWS, let's say any AWS uh, uh, credential is very, very, very important. Then how do you save it? Click on add credentials. If it is a username with a password, you can use this particular method or you have different methods. The secret file and the secret test file are basically used while mapping Git, uh, Git repository with your Jenkins. And if you have a SSH, then this is where you have to put your uh, SSH username, okay? And then, you, sorry, SSH username and your complete SSS private key password. So if it is private key, put it here, click add, then put the whole uh, key here and then passphrase for your key. So this is the method where Jenkins will encrypt even this information and you will be free to use in your jobs, okay? Okay guys, and whatever left over is a bit of a status checks and uh, yeah, that's it. So we're gonna look into this and complete Jenkins by tomorrow. So thanks for attending the session. Any doubts, guys, so far? Any doubts, guys, Prakash, Ameya, Rohit, and Ticha? Okay. So don't no, have this is great. Thank you, Abdul. Yeah, perfect. So let's catch up tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye.